Hello friends. So pretty recently I interviewed with a company owned by Airbus and uh, the position was for solutions architect position and I did receive an offer from that company. So it was a fruitful experience on my end. Now I'm going to walk you through the whole process, what the company does, what type of questions they were expecting, what type of tech stack they had. Uh, how many rounds of interviews I had and I'm going to talk about everything plus I will talk extensively about my experience and how did I prepare for that my preparation strategy my answer strategy and whatnot now for those who don't know Airbus is one of the biggest airplane manufacturer in the world and recently they acquired a company called Neo Blue uh, that basically builds software for the airplanes so as a software engineer that is as close to being a pilot as I'm going to get and I was actually pretty excited for that because they were they were working on some pretty cutting edge software products and uh, it's interesting they were building software for the pilots they were building for the airplane they were building for the cabin crew for the passengers how they get onboarded even if you see on the flights, they have these cool looking maps that show that what is the altitude the plane is flying over, how much distance has it traveled and maybe like these cool looking maps of the world and whatnot. So all of those things, they actually build that and the company is, I was interviewing for the Canadian office, but it's a multinational company. Uh, they have offices in North America, Europe and Asia. So it was a very well spread out uh, company and very good role. And now in total, there were three rounds of interviews that I did. So for the first round of interview, it was actually a technical interview with the hiring manager and one of the senior uh, architects from their team who had also recently joined in. And the funny thing is the architect that I was actually speaking with was one of the members of the air forces. So that's that's actually pretty cool that that person worked in the air forces and then uh, jumped or transitioned to the IT and then now he was working in this company. So I, I really felt that quite intriguing. On top of it, I have always been an Azure guy. I, I have learned and worked with Azure technologies, but the company was actually following AWS tech stack. And in the very first round of interview this was one of the very first things we discussed that uh, hey what type of tech stack do you have i asked them and they mentioned that uh, actually they are a aws guys and they saw in my resume that i had mostly experience with azure technologies but they were like we realized that this is the case but we believe in skill set can be developed but attitude needs to be there uh, so they were still okay with moving forward with me basically for the application and I personally really like that because they were uh, they had this positive approach that hey even if the person does not have the exact uh, skills they can still learn AWS stuff but uh, as long as we have someone who can uh, who knows the core principles now during the first round of technical interviews uh, we did not dive deeper much into data structure and, and algorithm related problems uh, but more or less it was mostly conversation about different technologies i work with what are their tech stack what are their products how do they are typically constrained and generated so in my opinion i would say that it was more like a tech conversation rather than being a technical interview um, there were some pretty interesting questions thrown at me and uh, during that like during that same technical interview phase actually certain portion was specifically reserved for behavioral questions as well and then they started asking about my previous experiences what are the scenarios i had to face and they asked quite detailed explanation about what are my passions for the technology what are my aspirations uh, if i'm being dealing with some problem how what is typically my strategy if i don't know something if i have to deal with different stakeholders how can i do that and there was one very interesting question being asked asked to me that what in my opinion is the difference between a software architect and a software developer and I was actually taken aback because I, I have never actually thought about this question that it can be asked in the interview. And uh, I, I, I ended up creating a very good answer 
in my opinion it was a good answer but in the end like my i asked the interviewer as well that what do you think uh do you think i justified your question and he was also pretty happy with that so i can say i think i i gave good explanation let me know in the comments if you want to hear the full answer and i can maybe create like a separate two three minute video on that but that basically summed up my technical conversation and my behavioral interview for that company so uh, that was a good experience with nav blue and i think i sort of realized that they are going to ask me for the second round of interview or um, third round of interview if we consider this as technical and behavioral both at the same time and which they did so they asked they actually invited me to their office and uh, they were like maybe we can have a 90 minute uh, conversation on system design and uh, maybe we can do that in person so i was i was pretty excited for that i did some research on what type of products the company is been working on and what are the scenarios uh, or what are the different types of questions can be asked i was preparing for a lot of interviews around that time so i had good grasp on my interview skills on top of it i always like to learn and understand what type of different uh, technologies are happening what are the different products we can use what are the system design principles uh, how can we improve the system how can we make it more resilient more scalable more accessible and whatnot so uh, i was pretty excited to go to their office and they mentioned that their office is actually shaped like a plane and the whole office is an airplane themed office so i was pretty excited for that and which was true indeed they do they did had like uh, uh, a hybrid working environment so there were a lot of people and when when i went to the the for the system design interview we started talking about that uh, they gave me a scenario and they gave me that okay maybe you can have five, five minutes to yourself try to think about it the scenario was very similar to like a ride share application uh, but not exactly like uber they had some changes and uh, i'm not going to go deeper into because i don't want to disclose the exact questions uh, but it was actually quite an interesting scenario and the expectation was to build a minimum viable product but in that minimum viable product there were like seven or eight requirements that i need to, needed to fulfill now the way they had structured the interview was that uh, for the first one hour uh, maybe I will go over my design, uh, do a brainstorming session, do a whiteboarding session, ask all the questions I have, define. So number one thing would be defining the requirements. Number two thing would be uh, asking all the clarifying questions and then start, uh, start whiteboarding all of the sessions, uh, which I did. And after one hour, for the last 30 minutes, they, are going, they were going to ask me all the questions that they had that they noted down from my solution so it wasn't continuous back and forth but even during that one hour when i was trying to go over all of those seven eight scenarios that we had built up i was explaining that what are going to be the approach how the consume what how the users are going to be impacted how the riders are going to be impacted how the drivers are going to be impacted what type of database should we have how we are going to store everything what should be the payment mechanism uh, how can we notify it how can we make system more resilient what is the scope of the system how well spread out it is uh, and whatnot so i think i i i was able to cover all the scenarios but it was not a very well defined design because uh, of course it it was a lot of requirements that i had to cover so that's why i started rushing over them and i think in that process i may have made some mistakes that that's what i felt now after that uh for the next 30 minutes they asked me bunch of different questions and uh, i was able to rectify some of the mistakes i made during those that earlier first one hour and which i think in my opinion made my overall system design better and i was continuously asking questions with the interviewer that uh, what do you think i'm suggesting this approach or for this type of work i'm suggesting that rather than using uh, a sql database maybe we can use a no sql database or maybe we can use a graphql query maybe we can uh, over here we are going to use a layer 4 load balancer for this component we are going to use layer 7 load balancer what type, what are the differences why am i considering that 
what are going to be the cost considerations uh, how can i make system more resilient what should be our duplication strategy do i want to make like the most expensive system or do i want to make a realistic system that sort of works within the given boundary and also does not cost ton of money to build that type of software so uh, there were lot of interesting conversations uh, that arose and uh, i was i i think i was able to justify them not 100% for sure i had my flaws and uh, i realized that so i think that was the whole system design experience now in my opinion if i so that was the whole system design experience now in my opinion if i had to do it again or what could have i done better so i think first thing i would do better is uh, be more open and mindful towards the design i am building because i rushed over so many things and i tried to tackle so many scenarios i think i could have chosen maybe couple of less scenarios that were not too important for the minimum viable product but i could have mo- made mo- a better looking system design so that was uh, one mistake i think i made a uh, second mistake was that on couple of occasions i did not understand the the requirements clearly and then uh, i asked those clarifying questions and then i realized that those were actually written in the original document that they provided me so i i think i missed out uh, missed out on those key indications because if the requirements is right there in front of my eyes and i still couldn't read it so that was that was a bad thing for me to do uh next thing i would say is uh when when we were doing like back and forth i think i was at one point i realized that for all the suggestions i was actually agreeing with the interviewer that maybe let's say i suggested system a should be the answer then interviewer suggested that instead of system a can we use system b and then i would be like, yeah we, we can use system b or we can use this technology uh but so uh i think i should have defended my solution a little bit better i know some at some points where i was in the flaw and uh, his perspective was correct i have to respect that uh but i did not want it to be saying yes all the time and uh, i did defended my solution at couple of occasions but still i think i so the take away from this would be that i should have provided better reasons on why i chose that and i should have thought about that beforehand also i should have like a, a clear set of directions that what i am choosing what are the trade offs so i just and once again that brings back to my point 1 because i was trying to tackle so many different scenarios i try to rushing them without putting much thought on the different trade offs so that that should be my key take away now in the end after the interview process uh after like maybe 5 days i did receive an email from the hr saying that hey you have been accepted and you receive an offer from uh, nav blue so they would like to join you in and it was it, it was a really good offer i wouldn't deny that but around at the same time i also received an offer from another company so i was juggling between which one to choose because both sounded tempting and uh i chose i try to negotiate but then i chose the one that was better in terms of like um work life balance and commute because this company was actually 120 kilometers away from my home and the other company that i did accepted the offer was in the same city on top of it rest of the things were pretty much similar um uh, in terms of tech stack and the requirements and benefits and compensation and there was also slight variation between compensation as well and i have a family to feed so i need to do what's best for for the whole family basically but overall i had great experience interviewing with nav blue uh maybe i personally hope that sometime in the future if possible i would love to work with them it's a really cool company and of course they they have like great benefits and uh, i honestly i really enjoyed the attitude of the hiring manager because he sounded like a very progressive person um just by all the conversations i had like i ha- i met him like on maybe two to three different occasions and uh, spoken with him quite extensively on how does they value their their employees what are the criterias for impact how do they judge that or how do they help 
a person pro progress in their career and so uh, i think all all the answers were quite quite uh, just if uh, all the answers were quite good and uh, yeah the the this was so so basically i wouldn't stretch this video too long basically this was my whole experience and uh, let me know in the comments what do you think about it maybe i missed something or do you think is there any way i could have done to make this video better i'm always looking for feedback and uh, i appreciate you watching this video so till then take care